this morning. Welcome to the Saugatuck Douglas History Center Tuesday Talk Program. I'm your host today, Eric Galanik, the Executive Director at the History Center. And uh, we're really thrilled to have this program with Kenneth Kutzel, uh, History Center Art Collection Manager, uh, titled Repainting the Town, a look back at the 1997 Saugatuck Douglas Historical Society Art Exhibition. The mission of the Saugatuck Douglas History Center is to preserve local history and inspire learning to inform and improve our community. Uh, we've been doing Tuesday Talks since 1996, weekly programs that present entertaining and informative insights into local community life in the months of July and August. This is our first season of virtual programs. Uh, and I'd like to thank our sponsors, Bill Hess and Mike Madden. Uh, for supporting this program today. I also want to thank our supporters. Our activity at the History Center is supported by the Michigan Council for the Arts and Cultural Affairs and National Endowment for the Arts. And the SDHC is also supported by Hope Grant from Michigan Humanities and the National Endowment for the Humanities. Uh, we also receive support from the Algon County Community Foundation Legacy Grant Program. I'd also like to thank all of you who are supporting members of the History Center. If you'd like to review, to renew your membership uh, or join, please visit our website, mysdhistory.org. Our next program, uh, you can find us on our Facebook page uh, and join us in the Back in Time Garden with Mary Jo Lomansky uh, for historical art techniques. Uh, here in Douglas. With that, uh, I'm going to hand our program over uh, to Kenneth Kutzel, a retired educator. Ken Kutzel, uh, hey. passion is sharing knowledge about the history of art and artists in Saugatuck and Douglas. He's curated numerous exhibits at the History Center, including monographic exhibits on John Polka and Wally Berg, the Big Pavilion Painting Exhibit, Michigan Dunes, Cody's World, Horvath Taylor Artist and Teacher, and most recently, Robert Ford, Rediscovering the Michigan Artist. He's also a tireless advocate for collecting and caring for our, our community's important art. And uh, we'll have a chance to hear and say a little bit more about how you all could be involved in that project of uh, caring for and preserving our community's art. Uh, after the presentation. Uh, so with that, uh, I'm going to hand the program over to Ken if you want to start your presentation. Am I on now? Oh, there I am. Uh, I want to welcome everybody uh, for joining me this morning. And um, I guess I should introduce myself. I'm Ken Kutzel. Uh, Eric already kind of told you who I am. Uh, this project was really, really special to me. Uh, to give you a little bit of background on it, several years ago I found a tape that was made, a videotape, and it's of Kit Lane, and, um, oh wait, you know what, I didn't put my screen on. Am I on there now? I did it yesterday. No, I think, I think it's not sharing the screen with all of us. Go ahead and click the share screen and... Uh, do it again. Uh, on Zoom. More sandpaper for that? You're fine, Ken, just like that. Okay, because I, okay, now I see me here. I've got all this other stuff on my um, screen. That's what I don't like. So, okay, I'm sorry that that got a little bit confused. And, um, Maybe we can edit that out uh, later on. Uh, anyway, uh, to go back to the story, I um, found a, a videotape uh, in a bunch of stuff uh, that had been saved. And it was actually a uh, tape of, um, it was a tape of uh, Kit Lane and uh, Don Badamo uh, sort of giving a walking tour of the 1997 exhibit, Painting the Town. And Painting the Town uh, is interesting because it was an exhibit and it was also a book. 
the book was the catalog for the exhibit at the time. And um, I came up with the idea of, you know, uh, well, I had the, uh, the video transferred to a, a DVD so that it was workable and, and to preserve it. And I watched it, uh, it, it, it's kind of poor quality, but I watched it uh, probably 25 times to kind of get myself familiar exactly with what did that exhibit look like and what was included. And uh, so I came up with the idea for a Tuesday talk this year of revisiting that exhibit. And uh, so this is the product of, of that idea. And I, I wanna point out that uh, some things were, you know, there were 159 items in the exhibit. So there's no way we can cover that in, in this uh, time period. Uh, understand that it's edited. But I also, I had to leave some things out that I wish I didn't have to leave out because I did not have images. Uh, it, it was not possible in every case to extract an image from the video. And you know, and when there were things that I wanted to use, I had to go into some of Kit Lane's uh, photos that she had taken at the time. But anyway, this is the product um, that we've got here. So I'm gonna uh, kind of move along now to repainting the town. Let me just get you here. There we go. Everybody can hear me? Okay. Um, this is, this is a, a presentation about the um, 1997 exhibit at the Saugatuck uh, Douglas uh, Historical Society at the time. And it was in the Pump House Museum. Um, is that working? No. no. Uh, just, you got to share the screen. It, it's not, the Zoom isn't sharing. Yet. Okay. Yeah. You know, okay. Let's go here. I feel sorry for everybody. <laughs> that one there. Okay. So we're there now. So this is what I want? Correct. Okay. Good thing we were here. <laughs> okay, that's why I wanted to do it here. So now if I go, I gotta get rid of all this so I can go into uh, into well, into place here. Yep. Okay. Awesome. Okay, I think we finally got it. I'm sorry if that got screwed up. Uh, but anyway, this um, this presentation is about an exhibit that happened in 1997 at the Saugatuck Douglas Historical Society Museum, the Pump House. And it was really the first time uh, somebody had uh, researched and put together uh, an exhibit of art that had been created in the Saugatuck Douglas area. Before we actually get into the exhibit, for the sake of somebody that might not be that familiar with Saugatuck and Douglas, I have a little map here. And you notice that Saugatuck is uh, north of Douglas and separated by uh, Kalamazoo Lake, which is actually part of the Kalamazoo River. Uh, there were four schools, uh, art schools in the area. Uh, the most famous being Oxbow, which you can kind of see in about the center of the uh, map there. And um, there was also the Crabiel School in Saugatuck. There was the Taylor Art School. Um, uh, in, um, in Saugatuck, that was Corbelis Taylor. The Crabiel was Albert Crabiel. And the final school, and actually the only one that was located in Douglas was the Greeson Art School. You can see that it was at the foot of Center Street, which is the main street in Douglas, um, in a little building. Um, in, um, and, you know, that's, that's where uh, that was located. Now, uh, when we talk about painting the town, we talk about the book Painting the Town, which was published by the Saugatuck Douglas Historical Society, uh, written by Kit Lane. And um, that book actually was the catalog for the exhibit we're going to talk about. So when we talk about uh, Painting the Town, um, there is a wonderful narrative meaning the book that kind of explains uh, and, and talks about the artists that were represented in the exhibit and the, um, the uh, artworks that were represented. Now in the introduction to the book, uh, the introduction was written by uh, Jim Schmenken. 
He says, this book and the paintings which make up the exhibition, Painting the Town, are about the intersection of art and local history. They show how two small villages along the Kalamazoo Harbor of Lake Michigan became the stage for an important happening. Hundreds of artists from all over America came to use Saugatuck and Douglas and surrounding vistas to define for Americans what is good and worthy about life. In the process, they helped Saugatuck define and memorize its landscape and its past. I've said many times that um, Saugatuck and Douglas are kind of phenomenal because not only do we have an, uh, a lot of images, uh, you know, in, in the field of photography that have recorded the past, but I don't know of any other small town. I mean, we could talk about New York or Paris, but um, I don't know of any other small town that has been painted as much. And uh, the, uh, the record of really what it looked like here is unbelievable. So, repainting the town, a look back at the 1997 Blockbuster exhibit. Let's move into it. Here's a picture of Kit Lane, the curator and the author of Painting the Town. And it was obvious to me as I got into the, the little that really survived from the exhibit that Kit had done an awful lot of research. Uh, it, it's interesting how some of the photos she had taken, uh, the stuff was dated as much as one and two years prior to the opening of the exhibit. Uh, and, and this would uh, explain why the quality of the book is so uh, high. Uh, a lot of work went into it and it's, uh, it has held up very well. Here's a, a picture of the, what I call the little notebook that Kit Lane put together in planning for the exhibit. And you can see that uh, she did some uh, regular camera photos at the time and then has some little notes in there. Uh, we were so grateful that Kit gave this to us uh, in, in the 2000s uh, because this is really, um, this and that tape are about all that exists uh, to in the book. Uh, to do research on the exhibit. Ken Carls was the graphic designer for the book and for the, um, the flyers for the exhibit. And this is a, an example of one of the flyers he did. And here you have uh, an, an antique uh, view from Mount Baldhead of the pavilion and the Saugatuck uh, water, um, waterfront. And of course he does the uh, you know, clever thing with the frame there. Uh, it, there. There was a lot of hype before the exhibit opened. And this is, uh, and I, this is a picture of, um, of the newspaper from Holland, the um, on, um, Holland Sentinel. And if you look toward the top, you can see a, a picture of uh, Ted Rada there uh, um, setting the exhibit up. Here's a close up of that. And um, the exhibit, or the article talks about the exhibit. Uh, Ted is actually working in here on the uh, wall that kind of represented what was considered contemporary at the time. Uh, and Ted was actually the designer of the exhibit, meaning he uh, did the hanging and uh, kind of put the exhibit together for Kit. And there again is another close up. It says uh, show designer Ted Rada prepares for the opening of Painting the Town at the Saugatuck Douglas Historical Society Museum. And I want to add right here that Ted was invaluable as a consultant for me on this program. He was closely involved in the exhibit and I kept asking him, am I kind of capturing it the way it was? So I really appreciate his help. All right. This is from the Holland Sentinel, May 27th, 1997. Two trees were brought into the museum and bolted to the hardwood floor with a mock display of paintings hanging on clothesline to represent a period in the 1950s in Saugatuck and Douglas when the clothesline art uh, uh, exhibits were popular. Artists who wanted to have outdoor shows would hang a clothesline between two trees and pin all of the unframed canvases to it. Lane said, a photo of one of these outdoor art fairs in 1954 hangs on the simulated clothesline display. And on the right hand side of the screen, you can kind of see the, um, 
that clothesline display that uh, Ted created uh, with the trees. And then uh, in, in the back of it, which would be to your left, is the wall that sort of represented Oxbow. Uh, and, and then the right straight ahead, it points into um, the, uh, the wall that kind of represented other schools. All right, so let's, let's kind of try to take a tour. Uh, this is the sign that was at the outside of the Pump House Museum in 1997, welcoming you to the exhibit. And for those of you who don't live in the Saugatuck area, the Pump House Museum is right on the Kalamazoo River, sort of across the river from downtown Saugatuck. So uh, what you're looking at there um, is the Kalamazoo River. All right, let's listen to Don Badamo, uh, who was a, a member, and, and according to Ted, uh, they used uh, Don Badamo because he had a good voice. But uh, he's going to tell you a little bit about the exhibit. In the town, a century of art and song of Dutton Douglas, more than 150 paintings in the area, done by a variety of artists over the last 100 years, were gathered together for the exhibit. The exhibit opened Memorial Day weekend and will close on October 26th. There were five paintings of the exhibit are owned by the Historical Society. The others were followed with members, artists, grandsons of artists, former residents and visitors from California to Connecticut and to Texas and to Wisconsin. And we certainly thank them for sharing so graciously such a collection of work that will probably never be seen again. In this video, Kit Lane, the exhibit curator, and myself, Don Badello, with the help of young man Bill Manifold, would like to document the artwork of that exhibit. And I want to make the comment that behind Don Badamo there is the wall again that kind of represented Oxbow. Um, let's move on here. When you walked into the exhibit, this is where you signed in. And for those of you who are familiar with the pump house, it's, it's not really that big. So it's amazing that they got 159 paintings into that exhibit. Uh, Ted said it was kind of weird because they were sometimes hung like a uh, stack three high. And he said some of them were hard to see. What we're looking at in the background here is a Francis Chapin, uh, which, uh, which appears on the cover of uh, Painting the Town. So that's why that was hung there um, sort of to welcome you when you came in. This here, um, uh, this wall represents what was considered um, uh, just stuff that was kind of cool that they didn't select. And in, if, if you were in Paris in the 19th century, you might have called this the uh, Salon de Refusé. Uh, but it, 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 they were just things that didn't really fit into the categories that they had set up, but they wanted people to be able to see them. And this was on the outside of the exhibit. Um, the, uh, in the, the south room. And uh, this is just to point out that they did what they could at the time to include some Native American uh, artifacts, uh, the Native Americans uh, being the first artists in the area. And again, we're looking, this is just, uh, I'm, what I'm trying to do here is give you a little bit of a feel for what the room looked like. Uh, we're looking uh, you, uh, to the right, you can see that clothesline uh, thing that was set up. And then in the back, we're looking at the wall that represented, uh, again, the uh, other schools besides Oxbow. And again, this looks uh, across the, uh, an another view of the, um, the clothesline, just to show you how it fit into the exhibit. All right, um, this little alcove here, represents the art from uh, the, the, that was, you know, the, the earliest. In other words, this stuff really predates the founding of Oxbow. And Oxbow was founded in 1910. So, and you can see again how the paintings were kind of stacked up and uh, categorized. And uh, it was interesting what Kit Lane did. And it's what I've tried to do in this, uh, in, in this presentation. Within the categories uh, she tried and I've tried to keep it a little bit chronological and that's really done because I think it's uh, the one commonality that all people have in organizing. 
So um, you'll understand that these are going to kind of be in chronological order, meaning by time. Now, the first um, example here is uh, by Karl Mauch, who was trained in Germany. And this is the tourist home and ferry. Those of you that are familiar with Sagatuck, you're, you know the chain ferry, which crosses from the um, east side of the uh, river, which is where downtown Sagatuck is, across to the west side of the river. And uh, to the left, you have the tourist home hotel, which later became the Mount Baldhead Hotel, which had opened one year uh, before this painting was done. This is an oil on canvas. Uh, one of the things interesting about this painting is it shows you the style that existed sort of before the Impressionism arrived in Saugatuck. Now this, this painting is by Harrison Paul Brown. And notice it was, it's called Sand, Sunlight and Shadows. It was done in 1910. So what that means is this was done the very first year Oxbow was in existence. He was here that very first year. And uh, obviously it's a, um, a Lake Michigan in the background. There's a woman with a parasol and um, it's a typical dune scene. And again, you've got the arrival of that impressionism. All right, um, this is a very, very interesting painting of an Indian uh, or Native American. Uh, and I'm gonna let uh, Kit Lane explain exactly what this is. Okay, and um, that was the voice of Kit Lane. Um, I want to show you that this is the painting that Kim, uh, Kit was talking about. And this is the Riverside Hotel by Joseph F. S. Murphy. And it actually was done in 1915. Uh, you notice the uh, Riverside Hotel, which became Oxbow Inn. And then to the left, the, the little shacks. Uh, that featured uh, pretty prominently in the history of Oxbow. Uh, a little aside here is recently the uh, Saugatuck Douglas History Center acquired this painting. So not only uh, could you see it back in 1997, it's been restored. This photo is actually taken before the restoration. Uh, it actually, it looks better than it looked in person. Uh, but anyway, um, when you come over to the, um, uh, old Schoolhouse Museum next time. This will be hanging downstairs and you'll be able to see it. Uh, uh, this came to us through the uh, Henry Gleason estate. And this is a, a watercolor of the big pavilion that was done by Cyrus Doherty in 1916. Uh, Cyrus uh, was here right before going to uh, World War I. And uh, he did this uh, painting. I actually believe it might have been from a, a postcard because I've seen postcards that look very much like it. Nonetheless, um, he kept this painting with him, uh, moved to California, and when he died, his uh, family um, offered it to the uh, Historical Society. And we, we were very, very glad to get that. Um, 
And the other thing I wanted to mention is this is another example of a painting that went through a lot of restoration. As a watercolor, it, um, it, it had faded terribly and uh, looks real good. All right, we're looking at what I call the oxbow wall in the exhibit, and you can kind of, you know, uh, I'm not going to talk about each one here, uh, but it, this does give you a nice idea of how Kit set the uh, exhibit up. This is an uh, oil on canvas by um, an artist named Minnie Harms Neby. Uh, obviously done in 1927, Lake Michigan and Old Harbor. So, um, you know, done here. Uh, Minnie Harms uh, was really the darling of Chicago in the 20s. She was a very, very well-known painter. And you notice, um, it's interesting when you look at uh, some of the almost fauvism, which means, you know, using uh, sort of incorrect colors uh, for effect. And how, you know, she sort of uses the purples and blues uh, alternating with the, the dark greens, sort of to create temperature and kind of give a feeling of shadows. So this is all part of the whole Impressionist movement. Um, it's interesting that I noticed that one of her teachers was Wellington Reynolds. And Wellington Reynolds was actually involved with the Taylor Art School. So I just wonder if she weren't uh, here at Oxbow and at the Taylor School, because uh, Reynolds was one of the summer teachers at the Taylor School. This is a uh, painting, Boats on the River, by uh, Edgar Ruprecht. This is not as impressionist. 1927 is the year this was done. Edgar Ruprecht was sort of a protege to uh, Frederick Fersman, who founded Oxbow, or was one of the founders. Uh, and um, this, is, this is a scene of the uh, chain ferry, but from the ferry store side. So this would be from the West Bank, <clears throat> kind of looking toward where downtown Saugatuck is. And uh, the tree in the center um, was a tree that was well known in front of the ferry store. Um, this is the, uh, this was done by Frederick Ferry Fersman, who was one of the founders of Oxbow. And this is the Walter Marshall Clute Memorial Studio. Now, Walter Marshall Clute was, was one of the other founders of uh, Oxbow, but he died in an accident in 1915. This, you can see the, uh, the impressionistic style of Fersman, and notice all the, the brushwork in there. It's almost, they're almost like crisscrosses. It's very, very typical of Fersman's work. This was probably done outside, and kind of quickly. Uh, bird Boat Builder, this is Albert Crabiel, and Albert Crabiel actually taught at Oxbow for a while, and then opened his own school, uh, in downtown Saugatuck. Um, this is a building that um, belonged to uh, Carl Bird. Carl Bird built boats uh, in the area, and you can see uh, obviously it's uh, well, Craig will like to paint outside in the wintertime. Uh, this building is not there anymore. There's a little like a telephone uh, building there now, but. Um, when you look at this painting up close, it almost looks like it's done with plaster or stucco. Uh, it's just a, a very, very heavy paint, but very effective, capturing the feel of wintertime. And here is another Crabiel done in 1927. Uh, you see the ferry landing, uh, which would be on the, uh, this would have been on the east side of the river, and to the right would be the, that Mount Baldhead Hotel. Uh, and the, the, the ferry, you know, so ran from there across to the ferry store. Again, uh, this shows how, uh, how good Albert Crabiel was at dealing with wintertime. One more Crabiel, this is a pastel, and um, Mr. Crabiel was really known for the pastels also. He would do a whole series of them, uh, one after another, and then date them and put down the time so that he could show how the light changed. Uh, this is a, a view of the, um, 
a big pavilion, and probably from the uh, west side of the river, uh, looking kind of uh, southeast. And um, for those of you that don't know the area, the big pavilion was probably the most famous building in Saugatuck. It, it burned in 1960. In 1930, many of the professional artists and a few amateurs of the area joined together to form the Saugatuck Art Association, which opened its own gallery for local artists and guest artists in the upper rooms of the Saugatuck Village Hall in July of 1931. This painting was by Thomas Eddie Talmadge, and, and Thomas Eddie Talmadge was a very well-known architect. You probably would be familiar with, um, with his designs for the Henry Ford Museum, um, and uh, also the Woman's Club here in, in Saugatuck. And um, he, in, in a large part, financed uh, Oxbow in the early days. Um, and then later there, there, there are woods uh, named Talmadge Woods for, um, for him. Anyway, th uh, this is a, a, a view of a, a place on the Oxbow campus called the Crow's Nest, which is a real high dune that in 1931 had a little um, cottage on top. And if you notice, there's a woman in a red dress kind of waving at you. Here is a view uh, of the big pavilion and Mount Baldhead kind of looking from the Douglas shore. So it's done by a man named Milo Denny. And it was done in 1931. Uh, Mr. Denny was a, um, a, a scenery painter for theaters and uh, moved his family to Saugatuck for a while. Uh, while this painting was on view uh, in the, um, in Saugatuck, Mr. Denny was on a job, uh, I think it was in St. Louis, and uh, he fell off of a scan, uh, I'm sorry, fell off of a scaffolding and died. Um, so uh, there, there, there really isn't a whole lot of his work. He died quite young. Carl Herman was probably, or is probably the best known ar artist from the Saugatuck area. And this painting is the big pavilion from the Douglas Shore. Uh, if you look through, it's kind of the beginnings of fall. And you can see the, um, the big pavilion sort of right in the center there. It almost looks pink. And then with Mount Baldhead over to the left. This was done in 1932. Carl Herman was famous for doing uh, dune scenes here. Um, and um, also, uh, worked out west and very famous for doing the uh, Grand Canyon and for desert scenes and also painted in Mexico. This was done in 1932. Here's uh, Mount Baldhead and the Pump House done by Sylvia Randolph in around 1935. Sylvia Randolph studied at Oxbow. Uh, she was an art teacher and um, probably one of the most famous and or beloved uh, citizens of Saugatuck. Uh, she painted until she was 103. Uh, and this kind of shows the, um, the, the, really this would be the Saugatuck waterfront uh, looking across toward where the Pump House Museum is with Mount Baldhead in the background. Uh, this one is a watercolor. I mentioned earlier that there was the Greeson School at the foot of um, Center Street in Douglas. And um, this was done by William Greeson, who ran the school with his wife. Uh, this was done in 1935, and it's of the um, bridge and the bridge keeper's house. Now, this is part of the bridge that was between um, Saugatuck and Douglas. And actually, uh, before the new bridge went in in 1936, the bridge was actually two bridges. There was a, an old metal bridge that had been moved here, and this would be the swing bridge that existed on the Douglas side. Um, if you notice way to the right, there are some smokestacks, which would be most probably from the basket factory that was in Douglas. If you notice um, to the left, there's a little boat in the water, which is really typical of Greeson. And you notice uh, right to the right of the boat, there's a reflection 
from probably a moon, and that's very, very typical in Greeson's paintings, is to have uh, one of those moons in there. This is uh, by Fred Stearns, it's a watercolor, and um, Fred Stearns uh, was a commercial artist in Chicago, but also, you know, did some fine art. And uh, this is a, uh, a fish shanty um, in Saugatuck. And if you notice on the right side, there's the boiler, what they used to boil the fishing nets in. This is one of the few items I, I did uh, include that's not a painting. And this would be a, uh, a little ceramic, like a tile, uh, done by Jean Delo Goldsmith. Uh, called Woman Mixing Clay. It was done in 1940, and uh, Jean Goldsmith was uh, was very involved in um, getting that art association going, and um, was a teacher in the Detroit area, uh, specializing in ceramics. This is um, done by Elsa Albrecht, and Elsa Albrecht was a very close friend of uh, Frederick Fersman and was involved in, Ox in Oxbow right from pretty much from the beginning. She later on became the director out there. Um, um, anyway, she, she, did, she was um, really into doing textiles, but also dabbled in painting and printmaking. And this uh, painting, Woman in an Ochre Sweater, uh, shows a woman on a couch that was put out on the Oxbow Meadow. To her left is uh, one of the cottages out there called the Red. And way in the background on the right is the Oxbow Inn. If you notice that there are no trees around it, it uh, the trees have not really grown yet. It was uh, pretty uh, open at that point. This was done around 1940. Um, the woman um, got the most interesting pensive look on her face, and we're not sure, you know, what's going on there. All right, this um, Churches in Winter is a painting that was done by Robert Harry Fort around 1940, and it depicts two churches. Um, I, I get the, I think the one in the front is the congregational. I, I, I won't say because I'm going to get them confused. But um, the, the church in the front is the one that's right behind the drugstore. It has aluminum siding on it now. And the one at the uh, top uh, look, still looks pretty much like that. Um, and you have some children, it, it has just snowed, uh, and you have some children pulling a sled in the street. Uh, you're, it's kind of wonderful uh, looking up the, um, the hill there. And Robert Ford uh, moved into Saugatuck in about 1904 and um, worked in the area uh, till 1954. Uh, he had eye problems, so uh, later on he pretty much painted off of his front porch, uh, which was the, the, the Newnham house. And so a lot of the paintings that exist that he did were really from the perspective of that front porch. Uh, he did a lot of things sort of recording life in Saugatuck, and they're kind of fascinating. Let's have, uh, we're gonna start with that painting by Robert Ford, and then Kit Lane's gonna tell you about another one. In the background. Above to the right, a long kicking fishing boat was done by Louise Crawford. Her father had a boat line that served Saugatuck for several years. They lived in a large house on Pleasant Street. This is the view of the fishing dock down by the river, probably in the 1940s. Okay, and this is the Louise Crawford on uh, 1940. And uh, this is another painting that just recently uh, we um, acquired here at the um, uh, History Center. We were very, very happy to get this. And this also came through the uh, Henry Gleason estate. Um, probably you're looking at a view of what was Seward's, um, Seward's uh, fishing um, rather than um, the ones that are farther north. And Emily Parks was an artist from the St. Joe, um, Joseph Benton Harbor area. 
She is very well known for doing pr uh, prints or lithographs, but also did watercolors. And uh, this one here, Big Pavilion and Boy, done in 1948, is very typical of watercolors of that period. And again, it shows a, a boy standing, uh, looking toward the big pavilion. So he'd be kind of looking south. And um, from the uh, west side of the river. This one, Sand Dunes, Douglas, Michigan, by Michael Hasselbar, done in 1948. Michael Hasselbar actually uh, spent that one summer uh, in Saugatuck, and he had an ad in the paper that you could order paintings from him, and you literally you would go and uh, tell him, you know, kind of what you wanted. Uh, and uh, he would do it for you that day. And uh, I don't know if they, they're oils, I don't know how he got them to dry. But um, I, it's, there are stories that he also would just sit out on the street and just paint and just sell them right off the street. Um, what you're looking at here is a dune scene here in Douglas. But uh, you are looking at this painting the way the people saw it in 1997. Uh, subsequently, uh, when it went back to the owner, it was sold in a garage sale and ultimately came to the uh, Saugatuck Douglas History Center. And after restoration, this is the way you see it today. This is the way that Mr. Ha Mr. Hasselbar would have intended for you to see it. That, that orange color was just uh, um, yellowed varnish that was on top. Model on Lounge by Ursula Randall, um, done in 1950. Ursula Randall uh, was on the board out at Oxbow and uh, in the earlier years, uh, she studied out there and was known for you know, doing watercolors. Um, she, you know, one of the traditions out at Oxbow was to do figure painting. And so there are a lot of stories about, uh, you know, the nudity out there, which they're true. And it just, it was just sort of bohemian and free. Uh, this woman, actually, we know who the model is. Her name was Cleo. I believe her last name was Norris. I would have to look it up again. But she would, uh, this Cleo went from art colony to art colony and um, would, would do the nude modeling for the uh, different artists. And one of the things that Cleo did, she always asked the artists if she could have one of the paintings. And there's a story that um, in, in her old age, she was living in California. Before she died, she donated all of those paintings to an auction that would benefit a, uh, an art school in, um, in Los Angeles. And the paintings brought over a million dollars. This is a view of the old lighthouse that was, um, that was there till a tornado took it uh, in the 50s. And um, this was done by Ellen Lanyon, who um, also was very active out at Oxbow, later on was, uh, was on the board. And um, this, this just shows she was very, very good with watercolor. And one of the things that's interesting about Ellen Lanyon, she often did views of things, you know, like back views or sort of more private or intimate views of buildings and that, and they're, they're really, really interesting. Lagoon and Lighthouse by Edith Hammond. Edith Hammond was a very close friend of uh, Elsa Albrecht and uh, came and taught at Oxbow in the 50s. Uh, if you look at this painting, it, it's really interesting because you can kind of see the uh, influence of Fursman and the earlier Impressionists. And uh, this painting sort of, even though it's in 1952, kind of looks back to a little bit of an earlier style. Uh, if you notice in the background, you see the old lighthouse uh, up sort of on a dune there. And this was done by Cora Bliss Taylor, uh, kind of typical of what we call her fantasy paintings. She would um, take a lot of license often when she was uh, painting a scene. And um, they often are become almost whimsical, 
we don't really know the date. She, she did not date her paintings. It's, it's an, it was unusual for her to do that. And this one is just called Dunes Near Saugatuck. And quite honestly, it would be almost impossible to figure out exactly where this is because of all the different buildings in it. And she often would add buildings in that didn't really exist. Her uh, paintings, especially these watercolors, are um, just all really so pleasant to look at. Okay, uh, we're gonna listen to Don Badamo talking uh, for a minute here, back to the exhibit. The Saga Artists Association um, had pretty much disbanded. And in that year, a exhibition was mounted at the Saga Jump Village Hall Gallery with both local, uh, with local artists, both amateur and professional. And after this exhibition, they decided to form an association to further the concept of artists in Saga. Okay, uh, and I just wanted to clarify because a little bit of that was cut off. The Saugatuck Art Association disbanded by 1953. In 1953, an exhibit was mounted at the Saugatuck City Hall Gallery, which would be upstairs. The exhibit included both professional and amateur artists. This was the genesis for the Saugatuck Douglas Art Club. Okay, here we're looking at the, um, what was considered the wall of contemporary art at the time. And it just kind of shows you, um, actually, the, uh, it's interesting because some of these are in our collection too now. Um, but um, these would have been artists that were currently working in 1997. This painting uh, was done in 1965 by John Polka. And John Polk um, actually um, worked for a, a lot of years here in Saugatuck. He did a lot of pavilion paintings. This, the pavilion burned in 1960. So this one was done either from memory or from a photo or, um, uh, but it's um, one of the little bit more formal ones of John Polk. Later on, uh, he, he got more and more, um, almost ex expressionist and uh, looser. Uh, to the left of the big pavilion is the uh, Coral Gables restaurant. And uh, again, this would have been done five years after the burning of the pavilion. Uh, it's a very, very interesting composition with that boat in the front. Um, and notice um, Polka, the way he treats the water, they're just little dashes. That's something that actually is a kind of traditional here. Uh, Fersman did that too. This is just called Gables and actually it's of the Coral Gables with all the boats that used to be parked in front of it in the, uh, in the period. So it's done by Krista Marilyn Wise who uh, taught art for many years in the Saugatuck schools was done in 1968. And again, you see um, very much like John Polka, just those, those dashes uh, and kind of breaking things down just to colors. This one called Night Lights by James Madonia was done in 1975. And this is actually a view of the uh, Gleason store. Uh, which is now the Riverside Market uh, in Saugatuck. And this would be, you can see Mount Baldhead in the background. Um, uh, and this is, this is the way, uh, or would have been the view that Mr. Madonia would have, would have had from his apartment, uh, sort of across on Butler. It was all open at that time so that you could actually see the store. Kind of wonderful the way he captures the nighttime. And, and actually the cold of the winter. This is by Victoria Litna, who was an artist from Kalamazoo who worked here. And uh, she, was, she was really, really well known in the 1980s here. And this is called River Fantasy. If you kind of look at it, you can take apart, she sort of, uh, she, well, it, it's done with pencil and watercolor. 
And you can see Mount Baldhead in the background. You can see the, the modern chain ferry in the center. You can see boats parked. You can see ducks in the foreground. You can see uh, on, the, um, on the left, you, there's a building that's gone now called the Ferry Store, which, is, uh, which was at the uh, western end of the uh, chain ferry run. And again, um, just very, very vibrant and uh, very typical of the 80s. This uh, painting was done by uh, Clifford Duncan. It's of the Butler Hotel. And um, Kit Lane tells a story or about this. Uh, the frame you're seeing is uh, from the uh, Butler Hotel, which is what you're looking at. And in the 70s, according to Kit, they were tearing off the two top stories of the Butler Hotel because they wanted to lower their insurance costs. And she happened to be uh, down downtown there and talked to one of the workmen and asked him if he would save her one of the window frames and, and he did. And she said she ran around town to see, you know, which artists were, were in the area at the time and she ran into Clifford Duncan, who was an artist that worked here and also in uh, New Orleans. And uh, she asked him if he would, you know, paint for her a, uh, a painting of the uh, pavilion. And he did, and so she put it in that window frame. This is a watercolor that was done by uh, Jane Van Dis, who was a really an, an amateur artist in the area. And uh, this is a, a Venetian night. Um, it, it's one of my favorite things from the exhibit. Uh, I actually, I, I talked with Jane Van Dis years ago about this painting, and there, there actually are three versions of it. This is the first version, and the story was that she, she did it for a class she was in, uh, in Kalamazoo, and uh, before she had a chance to turn it in, she sold it. So she did another one, and then she sold that one, uh, so actually, maybe there were more than, I don't know if she got it back or maybe there were more, but uh, I know she herself told me about the three versions. And uh, the good news is we know where all three of them are. So uh, you can see the uh, fireworks in the uh, sky and then uh, it's kind of wonderful. You, there are the hints of the boats in the back and then the reflection of the uh, fireworks in the water. This would be on Kalamazoo Lake. You can see Mount Baldhead in the background. And James Brandis uh, worked out at Oxbow and, um, and actually uh, is an example of the artist that came here and then stayed. And he opened up his own studio on Butler Street in Saugatuck. Uh, this is an oil painting he, that was in the exhibit uh, called Keewatin and Harbor. And for those of you that aren't familiar, the Keewatin was a, um, a, a lake steamer that was in Douglas Harbor and uh, it has subsequently um, gone back to Canada where it was built. And uh, Mr. Brandis is uh, still painting here. And this is Peterson Mill by Rob Fagan. Uh, Bob Fagan uh, at one time did a TV show uh, teaching how to do watercolors for public TV. This is of Peterson Mill in Saugatuck. Uh, Peterson Mill, is sort of a creation of R.J. Peterson. Uh, he brought parts here and sort of constructed it. And um, it, it sort of looks like it's always been there, but it, it actually uh, hasn't been. This is one of the most photographed things in Saugatuck. Uh, wonderful fall watercolor. Um, subsequently, uh, Mr. Fig had moved out west. And this is George Brown, Keewatin and Tugs, 1996. Here we have the Keewatin again in Douglas Harbor with some of the tugboats in, in the front. Uh, Mr. Brown was a uh, retired Ford executive and painted as a hobby. And um, they were quite delightful paintings. And this is an example on the outside of the pump house of something that was done by the um, junior high school for the exhibit. And you have an artist palette with some scenes in it. This is, um, you can see the river in the background. 
So having left the exhibit, this is, you know, again, another example of what uh, Ken Carls did to advertise the exhibit. And if you'd like to order a copy of Painting the Town, uh, you can contact the Saugatuck Douglas History Center at www.mysdhistory.org and look under publications. It, it, the book is really well worth owning and well worth reading because of the quality of the research that was done. And it's actually a very pleasant read. And if you have art from the Saugatuck Douglas area that has never been documented, or if you would like to donate art or money, please contact the Saugatuck Douglas History Center at art at mysdhistory.org. And I want to thank everybody for joining us. I hope you found that interesting. It's um, I, just kind of nice to be able to at least uh, save some of what that exhibit had been. And um, come see us at the museum. Thank you. I'll turn it back over to Eric. All right, yeah, thank you, Ken. Yeah, what a, what, a, what a great program, what a great look back at that exhibit 20 plus years now, 23 years uh, back. Uh, yeah. You know, I for one, Eric, just want to thank Ken for um, not just bringing that book to life and that exhibit, but to really highlight the incredible legacy we have with the people who um, made that kind of thing a labor of love, you know. Um, just to mention a few, uh, Kit Lane and, and uh, Ken Carls and Jem Schmeekin. I mean, um, the, the quality of what was done uh, is it, just, I mean, it's something for all of us to aspire to. Yeah, I would second that. It's, a, it's an amazing record of success of what uh, what work was done 20 plus years ago and how relevant that still is today. You know? So this is still our, you know, the starting point for learning about the art history of the area. Uh, it's, it's every bit up to date and uh, a great reference and it gives you great insight. So uh, those are available. If you don't have a copy of that, uh, visit our website. You can order that or you can pick it up here at the History Center. Uh, but uh, yeah, what what amazing accomplishments and uh, leads me to think you know what we can do next, uh, kind of building on this. Are there questions, Jane? Did you is that your hand up or Jim? Yes, I would like to say that I was volunteering at the museum then, and people were coming in. They were amazed at the quality of the work, the quantity of the work. Uh, many of the visitors just came in because they saw a museum that was open, it was free. But I think really this exhibit put the art and artists of this area really on the map because we had people visiting from many parts of the country. Uh, it's just, and listening to Ken this morning, I called Kay Smalley who was also uh, active at that time it's just great that we have this heritage. I would just like to add one thing. Um, I was working with the committee putting the exhibit on and we realized that we had people's cherished artworks and we needed a security system. And we had one, but unfortunately, it used to go off in the middle of the night and Henry Van Singel, who lived down the road, would have to go down and turn it off. But it was a great summer in Saugatuck. And Ken, again, thank you. Thank you. Go ahead, Jim. Um, yeah, Ken, I, I, I really kind of, I can echo both what Pat said and what Jane said. This is, it's nice to see this all done. I, I didn't happen to see the show in, 60, in 97, but it's nice to have seen it all put together. Uh, just back on the Jane Van Dis issue and the uh, and the uh, um, 
the Venetian. Uh, when when uh, one time I came over to Jane's and she had one, you know, in her bedroom underneath her her bed, yes, you know, under that bedroom where she had all the art, you know. <laughs> You got some of that art out of out of there too, and uh, and you didn't mention, of course, the polka came from her from her house too. But I, I know anyway. She had another one of the uh, um, uh, the Venetian nights under her her bed, and so she sold that to me. And I don't remember what it cost, but she sold it to me. And then afterwards, my sister wanted one too. Dee Dee wanted one too, and so then Jane borrowed mine to to copy. You know her 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 method. Oh, there uh, are more. <laughs> so, yeah, I mean, I think you know that because I think that uh, um, you've seen it at Framing for Friends. We saw it Framing for Friends, but yeah. there's, well, there, there are at least two. two more, so, yeah. Thank okay. you. Sir. Yeah, thank you. A anybody else have a question or? I'm going to try to see what we can do to take, you know, I, I, I was able to extract some of that video and I, I, I will just leave it at very simply, it was incomprehensibly difficult for me, but I, I'm glad I was able to do it. But uh, Eric and I talked about possibly trying to get that whole video cleaned up. So uh, it, it's kind of long, but for study purposes, it's invaluable. Because I mean, you know, thank God, Kit and 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 um, Don Badamo went through and actually uh, archived it as they did, and thank God, uh, 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 Kit gave us that book, that you know, um, binder with the pictures in it. Because other than that, you would only have the book, and 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 the book, the book's great, but when you actually get to kind of see the exhibit, you realize that there's a hole. So, okay, I'll turn it to you, Eric. I would just add the comment uh, here at the end. Again, thanks, thank you, Ken, for putting this program together and working through that. And we're all standing on the shoulders of giants that came before that 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 started this more than two decades past. Uh, I would encourage you if you have. Uh, information about art of the area, even more recent contemporary art or historical art. Uh, we'd love to hear about it or, or see images of it. Uh, we've a number of the works that you saw today, as Ken mentioned, have come to the History Center collections, are now part of our permanent collections, uh, thanks to generous donors like Ken Carls and Jim Schmeekin, who donated their collection uh, to uh, Henry and Claire Dean Gleason. Uh, trust uh, and others. And if you have works uh, in your collection or know of, of people that have really significant parts of the, the art history of the area, please encourage them to consider donating them uh, to the History Center. And we're always uh, working to raise funds for conservation as well. You saw some of the before and after examples of the Hasselbar restoration that's just night and day. Uh, when you get to come and see the Riverside Hotel Oxbow painting uh, from 1915 that uh, uh, Miller Fenwood uh, restored just this spring, I think you'll really be amazed at how that looks. And we have many other pieces in the collection that could use care in order to be displayed properly and, and cared for for the long term. So uh, I'd encourage you to consider uh, donating to support that work. Uh, it's it's, uh, it's uh, so vital to the stewardship and our care for history. So uh, thank you for joining us today and please reach out to me or to Ken or, or uh, any of us as you have more questions or comments. Hey Eric, I wanna add one thing real quickly. Uh, for anybody and, and the, because this may end up, you know, uh, beyond our own membership. Uh, if anybody wants to donate, and make sure that it goes to the art fund, always remember to put art fund in the little memo part on the check. Uh, so that, you know, I mean, I, I want everybody to get money, but I want more for the art. <laughs> so uh, we're always really trying because boy, uh, if you remember what Don Badamo said, uh, there were only five paintings that the um, society owned 
at that time, and we've got over 300 now. So we really have a collection that is, uh, makes it possible to put exhibits on. So, all right, thank you everybody.